I'm currently 20 years old and I started skiing on World Cup when I was 15. My first World Cup start was in Deer Valley, which was awesome, and I made finals um, that first event and that was such a sweet experience, something I'll never forget. I love the course in Deer Valley. It's always such a challenge and there's always new elements and aspects that the course builders and volunteers create every single year. Um, sometimes there are huge bumps or sometimes the top air entrance is pretty steep and challenging. And sometimes like in 2019 for world championships, there were tons of new snow. So each challenge is something that I always love about Deer Valley. I would say that my home club is Steamboat Springs Winter Sports Club in Colorado, um, but most of the time whenever we're home from traveling around the world, we do go back and train at Deer Valley. I actually grew up skiing at Killington Resort in Vermont, um, and I started skiing when I was two, and my brother and myself actually got into moguls by accident. When we were done um, with the ski school at Killington, my mom had asked the ski instructors where it was best to put us and they pointed across the way to the Killington Ski Club and my mom just signed us up for a random program so I could have just as easily been a snowboarder or an alpine skier. <laughs> so yeah, I missed last season due to an ACL injury. I tore my left ACL on the last training run before the last event of the 2019 calendar year in Taiwu, China. It was coming out of a top air. I had done a cork seven and I was trying to go as fast as I could on the exit and just started flipping head over heels and my ski caught in the worst possible way. I will never forget that first World Cup podium in Japan in Tazawaka on Duel's Day. I remember waking up and I actually didn't feel that great. I was a bit tired, my legs felt a bit sluggish, but I mean, I took it run by run and moment by moment, really, and then ended up, found myself on the podium at the end of the day, and that was incredible. That was during my rookie year, and it's definitely interesting because I feel like I've grown a ton as a skier and as a person since then. And my, I would say that my results don't necessarily depict that, but I am, I guess, proud of the way I have been improving. In the big final, I skied against Chloe Dufour Lapointe. It was definitely interesting. I honestly, I think I was a little bit of a deer in the headlights. Like I didn't really. As I had said, I didn't really know what was going on until I was standing on the podium. I was just trying to ski as best as I could, really. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I don't know. I don't really get nervous for competition, but maybe a little bit more so for single moguls because in dual moguls, I think you can have a few more mistakes. And as long as you're way faster than your opponent, you, you'll probably win. <laughs> Probably Hannah Carney and Heather McPhee from the U.S. Um, were big role models for me, both how they conducted themselves in competition and then how they were as individuals outside of um, competing, and that was really, really important to me. And then I also had some great role models with older girls on the team when I did make the U.S. ski team, and um, that's something that our girls team is definitely trying to instill um, in the younger generations of girls that are making the U.S. team now, too. One bright side of COVID is that I was actually able to start my studies at Columbia University in the city of New York. I haven't picked my major yet, but it's been awesome to explore some of my interests. Aside from that, I took a few solo road trips. I coached for Wasatch Freestyle on the water ramps, which was fun. I copy edited my first book, which was fun too. It is actually a memoir that the Crane Mousy sisters are writing um, about uh, Jeannie's crash back in, I think it was 2014, which is a pretty crazy story, um, but it hasn't been published just yet.